Hi everyone, I'm, uh, I'm from Singapore, uh, National Heart Center, Singapore. Uh, you can call me JS. I'm uh, from uh, the Adult Congenital Heart Disease. And today I'm presenting a case of uh, interesting uh, mitral clip complication. No conflicts of interest. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Yeo, who's our mitral clip guy over there. Uh, I wasn't scrubbed into this case, but he gave me permission to present it. So it's an 83-year-old male. She presented with symptomatic uh, degenerative mitral regurgitation. The etiology is uh, from mitral valve prolapse. Uh, he had dyspnea on exertion, MIHJ class 2, and uh, recent uh, two heart failure admissions. Echo uh, showed a uh, bileaflet MVP involving A2P2, A3P3, with uh, the predominant problem being the A3P3 segment, and, uh, which was, uh, had a small ruptured cord at the tip of the posterior medial segment. Uh, this is with a uh, severe and eccentric mitral regurgitation. The LVF was normal, the LV was mildly dilated, and the uh, pulmonary pressures was elevated as well. Had also uh, multiple comorbidities, including uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, uh, hyperlipidemia, as well as anemia. So this shows the echo with the prolapse, uh, bileaflet prolapse. From the color, you can see uh, the predominant jet is actually more medial from the uh, A3P3 area with a flail segment, which is a risk factor for the complication I will discuss later. This shows more of the A2P2 and the regurgitation. And this is the 3D images. So after a hard team discussion, um, decided to uh, go on to intervene with the mitral valve because mainly because of the symptomatic uh, severe mitral regurgitation. He was deemed uh, to be too high risk uh, from the surgeon, surgical point of view, because of his multiple comorbidities. And a mitral clip was performed. So the first clip was quite uneventful. It was placed uh, where the mitral regurgitation jet was the biggest, at the A3P3 area. And uh, post first clip, uh, the mitral uh, regurgitation was reduced to 3 plus. But uh, there was still substantial mitral regurgitation lateral to this clip. And a decision was made to deploy a second clip. You can see over here the 3D is the. This is the placement of the second clip. And the anterior and the posterior leaflets was adequately grafts, grafts, uh, and there was a um, adequate tissue between the clips over here. And you can see even before the clip was released, there was a substantial reduction in MR. This flow image is quite interesting. Once the uh, lock line was released, you can see that the second clip immediately detached from the posterior leaflet. And over here on the transthoracic, uh, transesophageal, you can see that you're still attached to the anterior leaflet, but it was partially detached from the posterior leaflet. So at this point of time, uh, the decision was made to deploy possibly a third clip lateral to the second clip to stabilize it. But after the deployment pin was released, the mitral clip was basically swimming in the LA. And it was only held uh, by the gripper line. You see over here the clip in the LA. And uh, the 3D. Basically, just floating around in the alley. So the cardiac surgeon was called, and it was decided to snare the clip. So it was first uh, re uh, redrawn into the right atrium, 
By doing so, we hope to reduce the risk of air embolization and we put a 035 wire into the LA through the same transeptal hole. Unfortunately, couldn't do it with uh, an snare, but subsequently managed to do it with an uh, gooseneck snare. So this was redrawn to a CFA and a surgical cut down was performed and the clip was removed. So we reassessed the mitral valve at this point of time. There was no serious damage to the mitral valve, fortunately. And the um, decision was made just to stop there. The patient was discharged four days after the procedure. Was readmitted subsequently for DVT, but this was thought to be due to prior surgical manipulation as treated with a uh, cause of a uh, Rivarox band. Uh, clinically, he did improve with the reduction in MR, did not have to be admitted again for heart failure. And the follow up uh, echoes actually showed moderate to severe MR. So, just a few learning points. Um, I think the literature. Uh, in the Everest 2 trial, partial um, dislodgement of the clip was not uncommon. It was about 3 to 5%. But total embolization is rather rare. So it's important to ensure that leaflet insertion into each clip arm is essential. And if it happens, you should uh, not lose the gripper line because it can be a final mechanism to prevent systemic embolization. And uh, there's a percutaneous avenue for allowing or snaring and retrieval of the clip. Thank you.